Hey guys, what is going on? Today we are going to be doing a very boring training commentary. No, I'm just kidding. So as you see here, I am hitting the damage cap. And if you see that buff on the second row that's fading away, that buff over there, that is just a screenshot. But yeah, that buff over there is called Infinity. And basically what Infinity allows me to do is, um, in the simplest terms for all you non-mages, it allows me to double my DPS. So my true attacking damage is 25 mil per line. But yeah, as you see, these are my equips. So don't worry, I didn't do like crazy adjustments to my equips. It's still normal. But yeah, Infinity made me double my damage. So my normal damage is 25 mil per line on Gullix. And Infinity basically allows me to hit the damage cap. So it just, you know, it's a cheat way to double my damage. But it's only a temporary buff. So, you know, I can't say too much about it. But nonetheless, between episode 2 and episode 3, a lot of improvements were made. Not so much in my equipment, I think they actually all stayed the same, but rather in my ability to play the Fire Poison Mage. Uh, if you remember episode 2, the end of it, we did a little Empress run and it was horrible. Like, it was painful to watch. So, even here, like, I, I admit as I was watching myself, like, through all this uh, bossing, gameplay as you'll see there will be some bossing after we get through the level ups it was still pretty cringe worthy because i was watching myself and i was like what are you doing because i still was you know figuring out how to play the fire poison um yeah so that in well basically inside this video we're gonna have a um it's gonna have a hard gullux run and the lag really killed me so like i'm gonna blame it on the lag but you know it really was the lag as you can see, like, when the run does begin to happen, you'll see why the lag kills me, like, five times in a row. But besides that, the Gullix run wasn't too bad. After I die, I do a second Gullix run just to redeem myself and actually succeed. After that happens, we go ahead and we do another run, and this would be Chaos Pierre. And Chaos Pierre is difficult. I'll just say, um, Chaos Pierre was difficult, but... I got lucky, like as you've seen this picture, I'm hitting the damage cap, which is actually another really encouraging picture for me because, you know, like the Chaos Root Abyss bosses, that's really the goal for this whole entire series. So, I'm hitting the damage cap, that's just amazing. Now the thing about it is, you know, my range is 650k only, so I didn't expect to hit the damage cap because if I was a phantom with 650k range, I wouldn't even dream about coming close to hitting the damage cap, let alone like hitting even past like 5 mil per line, that's even challenging. So hitting the damage cap on the fire poison mage, that really kept me going. And really the reason for why I started delving into the fire poison mage more was because as a phantom, I lag too much because the phantom attack speed is too good, I guess you can say. It's so good that I would lag, so the fire poison is the exact opposite in which he hits very hard, but he hits very slowly. So I decided to lean on the fire poison's gameplay in the sense that he wouldn't lag me as much as the phantom would. And yeah, uh, I do admit, if you watch the bossing that I'm doing, it's pretty bad because, well, several reasons. Chaos Pier was difficult, but not only that, I was just now learning like how Chaos Pier works. And I was also learning how the Fire Poison Mage works, and also the fact that I partied with a whole bunch of random people. So, you know, everyone was pretty strong, but nobody knew what they were doing, and we had never partied before, and there's no communication. So that really held us back even more. But I guess uh, during the time of this recording, Chaos Pier was different, and uh, if some of you guys do do Chaos Pier, or if you guys are aware, um, basically Chaos Pier got changed, I would say like, maybe two to three months ago from the time that I'm doing the commentary. So um, back then, when, during the time that this was recorded, Chaos Pier was different. And basically Chaos Pier was easier. And um, all you had to do was basically blue, the blue pier was going to aggro someone and that means he's going to attack someone. So all you have to do if blue pier aggros you is you go to a corner and you die. Like you just die in a corner. So I used to joke around with my friends about that. I would just say, yeah, just go die in a corner. You know, like when we're doing the PR run. But basically all you have to do is die in a corner and blue will continue to attack your dead body. And what that means for the rest of the party is if blue is preoccupied with the dead guy in the corner, 
then blue is not going to bother the rest of the party. So then if that's the case, the rest of the party can focus on red. And after red is done, you know, you focus on blue. And after all that is done, you get the kill. So the dead guy was basically contributing, even though he was dead. And that's how Chaos Pierre used to be. But they changed it to where now Chaos Pierre, the blue and the red, switch back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And what that basically means is even though blue aggro's the dead guy, the dead guy dies, stays in a corner 30 seconds later, or less than 30 seconds actually, I'd say around 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, the blue and the red switch, and it continues to switch. So if you know, like, if you do Chaos Pierre, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't do Chaos Pierre, I'm sorry, it's gonna, it's pretty hard to explain, but... Nonetheless, it is a very fun boss. It's the boss that I, it's the first Chaos Root Abyss boss that, like, you know, really entertained me. Because the queen, she's just kind of there. She just stands there and just burns all your potions. But Pierre, he, he really, like, encouraged me to do more bossing. And basically, the reason for that is because it doesn't matter how, like, it doesn't matter how defensive, how much HP you have, how much of this or that you have. If a hat falls on you, you have to dodge it, or you you know you're you're gonna die. If Pierre attacks you, you're going to take damage. So it didn't matter if you were godly or not. Like I'm basically I'm comparing this to Zakum. If you're like just think about it. If you're in a Zakum run and you you just you're high level, you have high defense, you can walk into Zakum's body and get like one damage, or you can even dodge it. If you're in Chaos Pierre, you can't dodge the thing if you get hit. You know, you actually have to move out the way. So this was a new type of bossing to me. So it, it encouraged me to boss because it was so much more fun. You know, like it was more, you had to dodge it. You had to actually interact with the boss. You kind of, I kind of just picture it like a dance. You have to dance around the boss, dodge this, dodge that, attack him here, and all that kind of stuff. So it really, really encouraged me in bossing. But yeah, it was really fun even though he was really difficult. You're going to see, like, when we do the Chaos Peer runs, as I said, this is really, like, my first attempts. So, you know, I'm not that good in control for, for this. My first few attempts doing Chaos Peer. And to make things worse, there's a guy named Ziggs, Z-I-Q-Q-S, that's his name. We invited him to the party, you know, as I said, we invited random people to the party that we thought were strong. So we invited him to the party. And I did some research on him. It turns out he's a hacker, so, you know, like, now I know. But back then, I invited him to the party. He started map crashing, so he was just, like, map crashing us as we were in the middle of doing the run. And, like, I'm not trying to pick any beef or anything. I don't really care. But, you know, I just, like, looking back at it, I'm just looking back at the old recordings, and now I'm just realizing, like, oh, this guy's map crashing us. <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't know back then, but now, you know, I look back, and I see it, and I'm like, oh, what the hell, that's why we were crashing. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it, it made it more difficult for us, and it also discouraged some of us, because, you know, like, everyone in the party, we were like, yeah, let's go do Pierre, let's go do Pierre, you know, we were all excited, and then, you know, we just kept on crashing, so that just discouraged us, but... You know, so I, I, I kind of feel like that's part of the reason why we weren't able to complete Pierre. So we did like many, many attempts. I'd say we spent around two and a half hours doing Pierre and we kept on failing. So yeah, like nonetheless, you know, I try to look at things positively. I just say, hey, that's a good practice run. You know, every time we fail, I just say good practice. And, you know, that's really how I feel like I should always continue to look at things because, you know, it's positive that way. But, you know, like, eventually we will finish it, not in this video, but, yeah, lots of fails. But, you know, the thing that just kept me going was the fact that Pierre's defense was pretty low. Basically, if you remember, I said Gullux, I was hitting 25 mil per line on my normal damage, so 25 mil on Gullux, and I was hitting 50 mil on Pierre. So, Pierre's defense is so much lower compared to hard Gullux's defenses. It really encouraged me to keep on going because, like... My gear wasn't that good as you saw, but you know, the Fire Poison Mage, it was fun. It was a character that nobody else really played, and nobody else really paid attention to it. But at the same time, you're like, right now, the way I'm doing this video, you know, people are going to want to play the Fire Poison. I'm sure some people will, because they're looking at this video and they're just like, oh, dude, 650k range, he's hitting cap. You know, like, a lot of my friends actually decided to do that. They actually bandwagoned onto the Fire Poison, which is pretty cool. So if any of you guys want to bandwagon onto the Fire Poison, that's cool as well. Uh, just a word of warning for you guys. If you're aiming for only 650k range, the issue is 
it's very situational. Basically, what that means is you need everything to be perfect, all the conditions to be perfect to hit the damage cap. So, 650k range is quite low in that sense. You actually have to aim higher to hit the you know actual damage cap consistently. But you know, it, it's a good start definitely. So, uh, would I recommend the fire poison? Definitely, I would recommend it. Um, but you know, just another word of warning. A lot of people quit the Fire Poison Mage, especially my friends. A lot of them tried to bandwagon onto the Fire Poison and they quit because they didn't like the way it played. Because, you know, you know, it, it's mages. A lot of people actually don't like mages. And I guess I'm just going to put this little talk in here. It's kind of like a market analysis for me. Um, in percent intelligence equipment it's pretty cheap right now it's still pretty cheap and the thing is people don't actually realize this or I'm not sure if people realize this or not but mages in general are probably the best bossers and I'm talking just in pure terms of DPS mages are definitely the best bossers and why first of all a lot of people don't like uh, teleport but the thing about teleport is when you're in a boss fight like you know hard Magnus or Chaos Velum where you just need to dodge everything, teleport is amazing. Flash jump, you're actually flying through things, you know, you might get hit in the middle of your flash jump. Teleport, you go from point A to point B. You can go in between things that will kill you, you can dodge things. So, teleport is definitely amazing, but the reason for why mages are really the best bossers, it's, it's due to the fact that they have skills which allow them to ignore boss defenses and those are usually elemental resistances or I'm sorry not elemental resist but elemental decreases and basically what that means is um, if you're a luminous you can ignore boss defense um, if you're a fire poison mage ice lightning mage um, you know like basically almost every single mage has it except for like I don't know beast hammer like blaze wizard which is coming out later also has it so like all these mages have ways to ignore boss defenses and people don't realize this yet and when people do finally realize this and they realize that Nexon if they as Nexon continues to release new bosses new bosses will also have high defenses I feel like that's really the new way of bossing more and more and more bosses have more defense Mages will soon be recognized as some of the best bossers simply because they can ignore defense. And that's partially the reason for why I'm hitting like such high damage. But obviously the you know you, you can't just go with like 0% PDR. Like as you see, I'm hitting 25 mil on Gullux and I'm hitting 50 mil on Pierre. Obviously boss defenses still do matter and obviously you still do need some percent PDR when you cube. But the main point is you know, like, that multiplies my DPS by so much. The boss ignore skills. I mean, the boss defense ignore skills. So, I feel like the bandwagon is rolling the wrong direction. And when people soon pick up on this, and when people soon realize that mages can do this stuff, the bandwagon, the market will flip around. And that's just, you know, a little short market analysis. Percent int is cheap. If you really want to fund a mage, you know, like, do it now you know that's what I'm gonna say do it now because the longer you wait because percent it is cheap it's not gonna go down it can only go up so if you really want to fund a mage you better do it now that's really all I'm gonna say on that because yeah the bandwagon is pretty powerful it's the hype which decides the market because the hype affects the prices for which the consumers buy it because you know it's not really the merchants that determine the prices, it's actually the consumers because us merchants have to cater towards the consumers. So, with the way hype works, people don't look at mages right now, so it is cheap. So, if you want it, get it now. And I guess just to talk about a few other things, um, the new Yunwall class, or as they call it, Shade in GMS, I, I'm just going to keep on calling it Yunwall because I don't really want to call it Shade. The new Yunwall class, they came out, it looks pretty cool, I haven't actually made one, I don't even have one yet, but um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and make one. What my goal is, is basically, if you guys don't know this, I think I've mentioned this in one of my past videos, um, you can get 200% boss and extra PDR without even using a single cube, like 200% boss, you can get it. Boss Nebulites, you can get it with uh, character card effects, you can the, the deck effects, you can get the set effects, the um, link skills, and you know all the other stuff. 
all of that combined, you can get over 200% boss. And, of course, dojo gloves. So, 200% boss, you don't even need a single cube. Basically, what that means is uh, weapon potential lines, those are really the most important things. So, yeah, basically, if you can get percent boss, that means you don't need to cube it on your weapon, or you don't need that many lines in your weapon, which means you can cube other lines in your weapon, which will increase your damage even more. So, with... Um, yeah, with percent boss damage, basically that means I need 9 level 200 characters, and I'm really on my way to like 3, I have my marksman, which is level 195, Flufflo, he's getting up there, and my phantom is level 201 right now, so I have like 3 right now, technically, sort of, not really, because they're not level 200 yet, but they're almost there, so what I need is, I need another 6 level 200s, and... Shade, he has an excellent character card effect which affects the percent critical damage that you do, so I definitely want him to be level 200. I mean, I definitely want him on my character card list, but the issue is if I want the extra percent boss and the extra percent PDR, which comes from having those uh, three level 200s in one set, that would also mean I need to get the Shade to level 200 as well, so I don't know when I'm going to do that, but yeah, uh, hopefully I can do it with like one of my friends basically what i'm hoping is um uh, because i lend people my weapon like my 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 uh phantom cane right now it's actually being borrowed by somebody he paid for the platinum scissor so he has it right now and he's going to return it when his phantom is leveled up i'm hoping i can do the same thing with yoon wall where i can just borrow a knuckle and level the yoon wall up to 200 then just return the knuckles, so yeah. If I can do that, that'd be nice. I'm pretty sure I can get somebody too, because there are actually two Yunwa enthusiasts in my lines that I'm aware of. I'm pretty sure there's more, but yeah, that'll be pretty nice. You know, like I'll have to pay for the platinum scissor back and forth, but that's cool. But yeah, along the lines of just platinum scissors, I guess, um, I actually deleted my video yesterday. If you saw it, there's only like 200 views on it, so I'm pretty sure not everybody saw it, but anyways, um, the, the there is a miracle time coming up on the 12th which is awesome but not only is the miracle time coming up there's also um a platinum scissor of karma sale which is like 40 percent off i think it's 40 percent off it's pretty awesome so i'm actually you know really hyped up for that i really want to buy those platinum scissors because those are really expensive sadly they're only seven day duration but you know i still get my money's worth since i'm going to use them immediately after i buy it so that's awesome and, you know, just in, along the lines of Miracle Time, I guess I want to talk a little bit about cubing procedures and how to cube your items because a lot of people have asked me these questions and they're just, like, they don't know how it works. Basically, cubing your items, like, a lot of people ask me, like, okay, I have, like, five unique items and I have this amount of super cubes or, no, not super cubes, this amount of NX. How do I, you know, what procedure do I use? What cubes do I use? And, like, what do I do if this happens? Uh, basically, how you want to start off your cubing, um, how I usually start it off is I go red cubes, and I red cube my unique items, because I, I never cube any epic items. I automatically unique potential them just instantly. Unique potential them instantly. So after they're, un after they're unique, what I do is I use red cubes until it lands at, like, 12% or 15%, and when it lands on either of those, I stop. If it's 9%, I keep on going. So 12 or 15%, I stop. And after all your equips have been red cubed to the point where they're 12 and 15%, it's time to use the black cubes. Use the black cubes on the 12% equips. And basically, what you're aiming for with black cubes is either 1, it goes to legendary, or 2, it lands on 15% or even higher. So if either of those happen, good, move on to the next equip that's 12%. That's really the procedure. And... You know, if you black cube a 12% item and it goes to legendary, what you'd want to do after that is stop using black cubes and go ahead and use red cubes when is, once it is legendary again. So, you know, like, I personally feel like the black cubes actually have a much higher um, percent chance in raising your tier. So, some people will say, like, no, that's not true, but that's really what I believe. So, yeah. And... Yeah, it's actually coming to the end of this video. Wow, I didn't expect that to end so soon. But yeah, like, you know, it's, it's always fun to do these commentaries. And as I say every single time after I do a commentary, I go out and get some lunch. But yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. It's definitely very encouraging to be hitting such significant damage now. I know I'm not hitting the damage cap very consistently 
or like not even that. I'm hitting it very unoften, but it is really fun, and I'm really enjoying this series already. So, uh, hopefully, you know, I'll pump out more of these videos. I'm actually a little busy. I guess I shouldn't have said this at the end of the video, but basically, with the way things are going right now, I'm applying for a hospital. So, yeah. I'm applying for a hospital and I want to do like 25 hours of volunteer at a hospital every single week. So 25 hours, that's almost like, you know, that's half of a full-time job. I mean, it's kind of like a part-time job. But yeah, I'm just rambling on here. And also, I have a pharmacy thing, which is, you know, like going on on the 17th. Like right now is the 10th. And on the 17th is a pharmacy thing. So for the next seven days or so, I'm not going to be as active. But I'm pretty sure you guys won't even notice. I'm still going to upload videos but yeah I'm just you know rambling on here but hmm, I should probably end this video <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching I'm glad you guys enjoy this series I'm gonna keep on going with this until we catch up to current times it's definitely exciting you know like I myself love seeing progress so I'm sure a lot of other people also like seeing a character make progress so that's pretty cool so yeah thank you guys so much for watching I will see you guys later